morning and welcome to another Fiverific Live Crafting Chat. Um, well, it's morning here in Brisbane, in Australia, and just right now I have to sneeze. What are the chances of that? Um, I realised when I rewatch the live chat replays, I say um a lot. So I'm very sorry for those of you that are noise. It definitely annoys me when I'm rewatching it and I just want to edit them out. I want to get in there with the little cutting tool and go snippety snip. And if I do that, we lose all the chat. So I'm restraining myself from doing it. So I'm trying very, very hard to not um a lot. Obviously I'm going to fail because I can't help myself and I don't realize when I'm doing it. But I'm going to consciously try and do it less. So there might be more quiet bits while my brain catches up to my mouth. So good morning to everybody in the chat. The first thing I want to say is I just jumped in. I'd run into the house and I've come back. Naughty little skein. Thank you, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. I understand that you weren't sure if you are going to be able to stay for the whole way, but I definitely appreciate you dropping in that super chat. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I hope you find today's video interesting. So I'm just having a quick look. We've got Spanner Chick in the chat. Spanner Chick, at Jackie Doyle. I'm just having a quick check to see if any of our other mods are in yet. Not that I can see. Um, th so um, there is, uh, I'll do it again, sorry. <laughs> the mods are here more for throwing in links and what have you and just keeping an eye on uh, people's comments. YouTube could sometimes be like, oh no, someone said it, you know, a word and, and we're okay with that particular word. We don't like curse words, but I'm going to see. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> sorry again. It's really cold here. I've got the heater on. So if you can hear it, I'm so sorry, but I can't turn it on. I turn it off because I will freeze. Uh, so yeah. So hi, hi, callers. Welcome to the chat. Hi, Kerry. Welcome to the chat, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, I'm a god. Get a real sneeze. <laughs> Thanks, Spanner Chick. Sure. Thanks, Sally. Sally's a mod as well. So what I was saying before my snooze, snooze, before my sneeze rudely interrupted me was that uh, the mods are here to keep the peace um, and also to throw in all the links that I randomly chuck out there. Okay. So it was a pixie sneeze. Thank you, Pippin. I much prefer pi pixie sneeze than get a real sneeze. Goodness me. Mm. Hey, Lauren Miller. Welcome to the chat. Sue Ellen. Um, the more you think about it, the more you're exactly right. You are definitely right, Sue Ellen. Uh, trying to not do it as much. I'm going to fail, but at least I'm consciously aware of it. When I was, um, when I was editing videos all the time, it got to the point where I could actually, we, you can see like an audio line as well as you've got your video line, your audio line. And I could see exactly where I would say, um, I could instantly, without even being able to hear it, know that I ummed there, 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 and, there, <laughs> and just be like in there cutting them out. Can't do that in live. So in live, we kind of just have to, you know, roll with it. Uh, if you don't... If you don't scare the living daylights out of everyone in a 50 square meter radius, you're not doing it right. Oh, okay. All right. So you're saying sneeze like my dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. Um, it's 16 here in North Lakes. I hate cold. I don't know what it even is here at the moment. I'm just going to. Sorry. I don't even know what the temperature is. I should have probably checked. I just need to get my little phone going so I can double check to make sure the stream health is good. Um, oops, that's also going to have audio, so let's get rid of that. So, I don't know why that's not working. I mean, you guys can obviously see me, right? <laughs> Chat's there. Let's close it and go back in again. There we go. I have an ad. Excellent. I'm going to skip my ad because YouTube doesn't like me watching my own ads anyway. So, there we go. Okay, so everything's looking good on this end. 15 in Brisbane. I am in Logan. So we get up sort of halfway between, I don't know, cold and super cold. I don't know what it is. Last night was ridiculous. It was so cold. I was working here in the shed and I 
it was just, you know, typing away, getting some things done, working on the thumbnail, things like that. And all of a sudden, my hands just got so cold. I didn't have the heater on. I was wearing a T-shirt, admittedly. Um, and it was just so, so cold. And I went into the house and my husband had already put the heater on and everything in the house. And he was like, why are you wearing a T-shirt? Like 15 minutes ago, it wasn't this cold. What had happened is the sun had gone down. And it was just like pitch black all of a sudden. And so I mean, because I have to ro run the internet cord out to the shack here. So I'm rolling the cable up in the cold. Anyway, uh, Freaky says, for me, it's summertime and it's not warm. Oh, okay. It's 11 in Adelaide. Oh, so in Australia, we use Celsius. So if you're in uh, the USA, <coughs> you'll need to change that into Fahrenheit. 7.5, 8 in Perth. Gosh. Wow. Okay, so story time with Chantel. Story time with Chantel. Yesterday, I was at the shops in Beanley and I was walking past my local florist and she lives local to me as well, so I always pop my head in and say hi. But what caught my attention were these stems of beautiful cotton that she's, be that she's currently using in some of her... Uh, uh, floral arrangements. So it's blooming marvelous in Beanley. Lovely, lovely florist. Does beautiful, beautiful things. You anyway, know, we were talking about the cotton, and I said, oh, I haven't spun cotton straight from a bowl in I don't know how long. I can't even think of when the last time I did it was. It's got to be. It had to have been at least six years, seven years straight from a bowl. Now, in saying that, I have spun cotton, and I'll I'll pull out some different cotton as well, and. She was just like, hang on a second. And she's gone out the back and she's come back out and she's handed me this. So she had one that had snapped off a display, like off one of the stems. And she was like, can you use it? And I was like, uh, yeah, I can use it. So the plan for today was different. Out the window, we've got cotton to play with. So I'm going to drop us down to our double camera and while I'm doing that I want to talk to you about Redbubble which if you can see that across the bottom there Redbubble um, which I don't even, I didn't I didn't bring one of my mugs out I feel ashamed of myself Redbubble is a, a local Australian well they're also in the USA place where we can get some of our great merch done uh, cups and totes and little zipper bags and I have nothing I've literally got nothing out here it's all in the oh Wait a second, there's one. Here we go. Oh, falling down. Here's a tote. One of the totes. This is a 41 centimetre tote. That's got a whole pile of squares in it. Oh, gosh, sorry, guys. My nose just all of a sudden went haywire after I sneezed. Um, so if you want to get yourself some Fibrific merch and uh, a cup or a tote or a zipper pouch. I really like the zipper pouches. They've got those big chunky metal zips. I love those. Uh, where are we? Bloomin' Marvellous. Thank you for popping that link in Spanner Chick. Cotton bowls in flower arrangements has been a trend over the last few years. It has. It has. But I hadn't seen them uh, at a local florist. I'd seen them online but not a local florist. So what I'm going to do is um, just sort of – you just – like it's in little divisions, you can sort of see here. There's like just little sections. Now I did pull one yesterday already. So just to double check it was good cotton. It seems to be good enough. Um, I don't think it's top grade, otherwise they would have sold it to someone else rather than a florist. Um, so this is what they look like inside. So what happens is the cotton flower flowers and it looks a bit like a uh, depending on the cotton genus a little bit like a pale lemony limey colored hibiscus like a, a, a and it's just like a little version of a hibiscus they're beautiful I actually am planning on retrieving some of these seeds and growing some um, so it looks like four balls yeah this one was five because I've already I've already got one tucked aside here that I've done so you just pull it out carefully and gently and it just comes right out Pop that to the side. I, t I like to pick off any bits of leaf litter or or bits of the the you know the dead flower bit just to make life a bit easier for me later. I can feel a few seeds in this one. 
So there we go. So there's a, there was actually two bits there. So what I like to do is I like a map so I can see what I'm doing, which was convenient for you guys. So it means you'll be able to see what you're doing as well. Um, and then I just gently tease it out. Now I'll give you a show because it's there's a seed right here. So some seeds are smooth and a, a, a standard gin is like two, two big fat rollers and you just roll it through and the seeds just pop out. These fluffy seeds, they're a little bit more work. They, they do gin out pretty easily if you've got like a proper gin, which I don't. I'd use my hands. And there we go. We have a seed. I'm collecting the seeds because we can, depending on the cotton and where it's come from, I should be able to germinate that. So I've just got a little bucket here that I'm just popping the seeds into. We can feel another seed here. So I just tease it off the seed of the seed as much as I can. I do try to keep the cotton whole as much as possible. Does it make sense? <laughs> Freaky Geek gets his cotton from the bank. Australian money is plastic. We don't have rag money here in Australia. We have polymer money. Oh, there we go. Next seed out. Pop. Okay, so we've got no seeds left. And you can see that the the actual fibers themselves. Oh, that one's quite quite long, just to prove me wrong. There's some quite short fibers, but what I like to do is sort of tease it out so it's a bit even. So see how there's like a big thick section there? I like to make it less thick. And then go through here and do the same thing. Technically, I'd actually like to just pull those apart and do them separately, but I won't. I'll, I'll refrain and just tease it out. Now, you can either spin it straight from this as is. See, there's definitely two distinct pieces. I am going to pull them apart. Okay. Now, you can spin it as is and just go hard, or you can do what I prefer to do, which is make punies, P-U-N-I-S, punies. And I use a knitting needle, and you just lay it down. Now, sometimes you need a little bit of water. I grabbed a, a little tray with just some paper towel just to, just to rub a little bit of water on my knitting needle. I don't like too much, but just enough to hold this initial edge. And you just roll it up. You don't want it tight. You just want it rolled up. And then I pull it off. I just give it a little pat down and pull it off. Now, like everything we do here at Fibrific, I this is just how I do it, okay? There is probably more traditional ways to do it. This is how I was taught to do it by a lovely lady at Queensland Spinners Guild, Carleen Lewis. She grows her own cotton. Um, and she taught me how to roll punies on a knitting needle. Um, she would sit there for hours at Queensland Spinners just making an entire big thing. And what she would do is she would make big punies. She would keep, like, pat a whole pile together and then roll them in one, like little punies. Um, and so I like to do it with one ball at a time. So you can totally have one here and then get this next one here and mat them around to the length of your knitting needle and roll it up. You also don't need to use a knitting needle. So um, I'm going to roll this one up. On you go, little bits of cotton. Because you want it snuggish, but it doesn't need to be like matted, if that makes sense. Yes, um, Freaky Geek, I did one yesterday afternoon to double check that this cotton was usable. Um, there's a little get there, yucky bit, I'll get rid of that. Got another little knotty yucky bit there, get rid of that. Oh, my nose is going insane. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so let me have a look here in the chat. Happy birthday to Kathy Breyer. Happy birthday, Kathy. Um, roll lags are rolled off a blending board. Yes, they are. Um, and they're normally lined up so the fibers are a bit more it's that whole worsted woolen thing so fibers in a roll egg tend to be more worsted or semi-worsted whereas with a puny it's just rolled if that makes sense it's also generally smaller roll eggs are quite long quite round 
whereas poonies tend to be long and thin, like cigarettes versus cigars. Um, poonies as opposed to Rolex. That's right. That's exactly right. I'm just having a quick scroll back through the chat here. Apparently Chintamani can't type on her tablet. Okay. Uh, I normally get money from the bank. Yep. I'm here. I'm late for a very important date. My sister called to wish me a happy birthday just as live was starting and then had to feed the cats and put them to bed. Well, we've got your attention now and you've got ours. Happy birthday. What if you don't smoke? Well, I mean, you may not have seen a cigarette versus a cigar. So I was just using that as a, an analogy. You don't have to smoke to spin cotton. So, and as I was saying, this is just how I do it. There's so many different ways to do things, guys. And if my way doesn't work for you, go hunting and find a way that does work for you. Um, and this is how I sort of found the ways I like to do things because I couldn't always do things the way I was shown or was the traditional way. And so I just sort of found my own path. Um, then you get lots more spin. Oh, gosh. I, where are all the thumbs? Well, mine are in my hands. I'm just gently teasing this up. What I'm going to do after I do this one is I'm going to do a little bit of spinning. So if you guys have got any questions, I actually have down here next to me as well a bag with a few different other cotton preparations. So you can see some of the ways you can buy cotton. So this is the way um, if you're getting it directly from a plant or if you happen to have a mate who's a florist um, who can give you some. But this only, like this gives you a bit. Now the other thing to remember, the cotton balls, like the actual cotton balls in your medicine cabinet, have a read of the packet. Generally, they're 100% cotton. And Carleen told me a story one time where she was hanging out to spin, didn't have anything on hand. Back in the day, couldn't order on eBay or online or of any description. Online was not a thing in the, in the, in the 70s and 80s. And um, so she dug through her medicine cabinet and found a packet of cotton balls. She was just like, I wonder if I can spin these. And she did. And she made herself the most beautiful top, which she was wearing that day. And she, it was one of those um, pink, blue, white mixed bags, no, pink, blue, yellow mixed bags that she happened to have. But double check it if it's pure cotton. I mean, one thing that um, Le Leone, one thing that um, Carleen was saying was that you can pretty much spin anything. You could spin lint dryer, uh, dryer lint if you really wanted to. And I was just like, wow, you'd have to be pretty desperate to spin dry lint. A uh, lint dry, ah, uh, dry lint. I was right. And she was like, well, yeah, you would have to be. But you can if you want to. Um, do they still sell cotton that looks like folded bats? I believe you, you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, normally more from the chemist than from the – I'm just double-checking there's no seeds. Um, normally more from the chemist rather than from the supermarket. Although I recall – I mean, I would check. But, yeah, the, I know the ones you mean. Break out all the little tufty bits. So, because I didn't break this one apart, um, it's going to be much bigger, but I'm just sort of pulling the fibers. So, see how that was sort of like a shiny wad? We don't want that for when we're spindling, so we break it up a little. We just tap it down. That's why we have a little mat under us. We utilize our mat. This is just my mouse pad turned upside down. It's not as anything special. Um, you can use it the right way up, but the right way up, mine's really quite colourful and distracting. So I went with the other way for today. Also, being dark, it's helpful for you to be able to see where you've got thick bits versus thin bits. So you can pull it out a little. Okay. It's not perfect, but it'll do the job, I reckon. Uh, let me have a look in the chat. Do they? Uh, hi, Ida. Help, welcome to the chat. Pippin says, lol, I'm actually checking my medicine cabinet. Do it. Um, Kerry says, my auntie spun rainbow cotton from coloured cotton balls. Absolutely. Uh, this top that, that Carly made was just so gorgeous. She knitted it up. There was a little bit of texture, so you had like little nups of colour. It was gorgeous. Um, 
Now, when you're spinning cotton, you have to add more twist. Yes, you do. Now, it's like anything, the finer you spin, the more twist you need. Um, the other thing is, if it's shorter fibers, it needs more twists. What's the difference between good quality and bad quality cotton? Uh, well, bad quality cotton tends to be just shorter, really. Oh, face cam. Um, there's different grades of cotton rather than good and bad. And so uh, here in Australia, we've got very high grade cotton. So um, it's not really a thing for us to get bad cotton. There is, once it's been processed, because of the different ways it gets processed, sometimes you get it and it's a mess. Um, so sometimes getting ginned cotton, you saw how carefully I pulled this apart and made sure I picked out all the bits. When they gin it, that goes in like that. And so all these bits get broken up and mixed through it. And so it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. So I'm just going to roll up this poonie. Oh, I just want to spread this out a little bit more. Sorry, guys. I am being a little pedantic. Probably more pedantic than I need to be, honestly. I just like them to be even. That's all. There's my little thing. Even, Steven. Over we go. Rolly, rolly. Make a pony. I mean, this one's, this one's, I'm not a fan of ones this size, honestly. I do like my little ones, but you see, you can do them big. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull up from the side here. I've got a bag of a few different cotton preps. So what we're doing right now is spinning straight from the cotton bowl. Okay. So we can go through, we've got, no, oh, I've got stuff stuck to my fingers. We've got no leaf matter stuck in here. We've got no seeds. We've, it's clean, it's ready to spin, no issues. Um, could you do the cotton with the brushes? There are cotton carters, absolutely. So like hand carters, there's versions of them that have their teeth much closer together called cotton carters. They're smaller and you can absolutely do them on cotton carters for sure. Um, all right, so in my bag here we have, so you know how I was talking about ginned messy cotton? Just trying to, so this is some messy ginned cotton here. See how it's got all, I can see better, the camera's not really showing it, but there's all like bits, like little brown dots all through it. It's totally usable, totally usable, but that would bug me because of all these bits. I would be constantly stopping and pulling them out, okay? Like there's a bit of leaf, there's a bit more leaf. You know, it's 100% usable and you can totally use that. Here is another ginned cotton with much, it still has some bits and bobs through it, but nowhere near as many, okay? So it's still some in it, but nowhere near as many, all right? So you can see the bits, that's good. So, th so that is another ginned cotton. Then we can get onto our cotton slivers, okay, which is where it is, oops, that's a puny I made another day. Um, this is cotton sliver. So it's all already, it's gone through like the ginning and then it's being gilled as well, which is another machine that turns it into sliver. And it's just straight up cotton ready for spinning. So here we can see the cotton fiber is quite short. Okay, so that is once it's been. So you can buy it like this as well. So you don't have to buy it on the bowl. You can buy it already in sliver, ready to go. And then there's different cottons come in different colors as well. So um, there's some really neat information out that you can get um, explaining why there's different colors, different grades, um, and all the different preparations that you can do with your cotton. So this is one, this is a one that I made on a blending board, um, not on a blending board, sorry, on a hand carter, just a standard hand carter. So it's a bit, for me it's a bit compact, there's a bit too much in there, I like them a little bit more open. So this was, I made this years ago and I've just sort of kept it there to remind me what not to do. Uh, late to the feed, when is cotton harvesting time in Australia? Oh. 
Vivian. I don't know. Let me think. It's around Bendigo, so it's uh, June, July, I think. Um, yeah, there we go. Spanish chick said, planted in spring, harvested in autumn. What's a hand carter? Oh, I don't have any out here. Basically, it's a paddle with all these little teeth on it, and you have two of them, and you brush one against the other, and it says it, it goes all different. Um, it goes smooth like this, and then you can roll it into little roll eggs. Do we have brown Australia? Yes, we do. Um, there is a lot of coloured cotton available. Australia has lots of different types, but the most common cotton that people want is the A grade in the white, and the whiter the white, the better. You can see that like some whites are whiter than other whites, if that makes sense. So um, there's all sorts of grading for cotton. They look like the slicker brushes you use on your dog, but bigger. That's right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to pop these back in their little baggy and get them out of the way. I Look, I think, like anything, try all the things. Work out which you prefer. Sliver to me is that little bit too smooth. It, it really feels like you're working nearly with a silk, honestly. Um, here's two different grades of sliver even. This one's a bit fluffier. This one will be easier to spin than this one. So, yeah, all different grades, all different preparations. Keep trying until you find one you like. Get off there. Okay. All right, next thing we have here is you can spin cotton on whatever you like. I am not the spinning police. I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Mm. You can spin on whatever you like, but what I have here is a tarkling. And what this is, it's a metal spike with a little hook on the end and a brass disc or a metal disc. It is heavy for its size, which also means it'll spin really fast. Okay. Now, the other thing is I do not use my very pointy, sharp metal tarkly in any of my timber bowls because it will wreck them and it'll trash them up. So I just have a little, it's a little tear light bowl that I use. You can use whatever you want, really, as long as it's got um, space for the thing to spin. Okay. All right. Now, it's been, I really wanted to do this off camera first and get the join going. It's been a really long time since I've started a cotton thing. And I've just realized my camera is really close to my hands here. And it may bug me. I don't like starting the spin on camera. I don't know what the deal is with that. All right, what I might do is just raise this camera up just a dash, okay? All right, you can see my coffee cup. Sorry about that, guys. All right. And then it's just like supported spindling, except it just needs a bit more twist. Now, we've probably got to see how it's gone like that. We've got the curly piggy tail thing going there. There's probably a bit too much twist in there. So what I'm going to do is just draft out a bit more and let it just carry the twist. See how there's a chunky bit in the middle? I'm going to go and fix that and get in close and draft that a little bit more. Get some twist up to that. There we go. All right, now we've got our little leader. Break that off there because it's stuck. Get off you. Bit of fluff, annoying. Don't like you. Get off, thank you. All right, and then it's just like spinning with the supported spindle. You wind a bit on the bottom. Make sure it sticks. And then wind up the shaft over the loop and keep spinning. And then just keep spinning. Make sure you're spinning in the same direction that you were. Get some good twist. Now, because I'm unused to tarkly spinning, I'm parking and drafting, which means I spin a bit, I stop it, I pinch, and then I draft. Okay? And then unpinch to let the twist travel. Okay? And then keep going. 
and like any support spindle spinning you can go really really fine if you want you can go a bit chunkier if you want it's your yarn you can do what you want you are the boss of it it's, that's not spinning that's that's just hooking on there stop that you need a bit more twist okay and then whoops we bring it down the thing to remember, it's not as elastic as wool. And look at this. I was just drafting it and it's come apart. What a butt. Okay, I see what I've done there. Okay, note to self, I'm spinning the other way. <laughs> All right, this is why we don't do these things live. Because you stuff it up. All right, let's join it on. So what I'm doing to join it back on is I just added a bit more cotton over the weak spot and I'm having to untwist it and retwist it in the right direction so it's going to get loose and evil. Let me look. Don't pitch so hard you'll bruise it. Does Fibrofix sell Tarkleys? No, I don't. Sorry, you'll have to hit up Etsy for your Tarkley dealers. Let me just double check I am going in the right direction here. Seems to be. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. Let's get this going. So I got my Tarkley from... I believe it was Lindy Boschler a few years back. Um, did you just call your spinning a butt? Yes, I did. Yep, there's a distinct possibility I probably did call it a butt. Um, I do call lots of things butts. Um, anything that's not really doing what I want it to do is a butt. Okay. Uh, welcome to Fibrific. <laughs> um, I have one and keep trying to use it like a Turkish spindle. Look. Technically, you probably can. Um, it's got a hook on it. It can support the weight. You could probably do it without the bowl. Um, I don't know. I think I just prefer, I'm just like that person who prefers the bowl because the other thing is because it's so heavy, once it's finished twisting, it does start untwisting and spinning the other way, and that can get very annoying very quickly. I've got too much wound on like that. That bugs me. Let's get some more wound on the bottom. And so because this thing is so weighted and so heavy, it twists quite quickly. So it's an adjustment from me using my timber spindles going into a Tarkley because I normally have to give them a bit more welly to get them to get this much spin on. So I'm like having to readjust. It's like changing spinning wheel ratios. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... I got one in the mail today. Wow. Shintami says mine's made of carved obsidian and it's very pretty. Is it heavy? I thought Tarkleys were mostly wood, uh, mostly metal. Um, oh, yes. Butt face is the current insult of choice in the Zoom chats. Absolutely it is. There are lots of butt face things. Uh, Leanne's named her cat in one of the games butt face. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. Okay. I didn't quite give myself enough tail. There we go. All right. Can you guys still see all right? Let me know if you can see. Um, Sue Ellen says, I once spun cotton from medicine bottles on a chopstick on a plane trim back to the US. It was a bit chunky, but it kept me busy as I'd run out of wool to knit. I bet it kept you busy. How did that go spinning it on a chopstick? There's no weight in that. And as you can see, out of one of these little, I mean, I think I've got the big poonie here, but out of one poonie, you get a fairly decent amount to spin. It's not insignificant. And cotton, if it gets enough twist in it, is quite strong, which is why it's used for so many things. 
It's pretty heavy, but no hook. Yep. Okay. Um, Vivian says, spinning on a Tarkley unsupported seems to be like spinning silk on an Ashford spindle. Mm-hmm. Spinning anything on an Ashford spindle, really. Um, uh, I believe, yep. Yeah. Alison, just tuned in. Great to see you spinning cotton. I just finished some on my little book, Chakra. Small drop spindles work well too. There you go. You like what sort? What sort of drop spindles would you use for cotton? I would. Yeah, I'm very interested. Hey, Diana E. Welcome to the chat. Don't forget to pop a thumbs up if you are enjoying what we're doing here. So, my plan for this cotton, once I've spun it, is. I'm going to turn it into a piece of ribbon. So I, I haven't decided if I'm going to crochet or knit it, probably knit it, honestly, um, on some fine needles. And I'm going to give it back to the florist for her to wrap around one of her bowls or pots or something. Um, also, so she can see what her cotton bowl turned into. So hopefully I get enough meterage for that. Now I'm going fairly thick, honestly. This is quite thick for cotton. You could go considerably thinner, um, but I'm happy with that. So I mean, it's 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 good construction. It's going to be a two ply. I'm just going to ply it back on itself, and you know, get as many meters as I can out of it. I'm very unco with this. It's been a long time since I've done it. So, you know, forgive the slowly, slowly. Ah, uh, Sally's got a good point. Don't forget to put your chat into live chat, not top chat. Don't let YouTube decide which comments you get to see. Um, Freaky Geek said, for those that missed the message, Leanne's craft room said hello. She's missing chat, spending time with her daughter. Thank you, Freaky Geek. Yes. Oops. Whack the camera. Sorry, guys. As I get back into the swing of this, it'll be easier and I'll be less unco. We're getting yarn. Like, either way, we're getting yarn. So, <laughs> I may be unco, but I'm still productive. You could knit a length of eye cord with that. That would make a pretty tie for a vase or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, eye cord would be definitely better than just a flat ribbon, I think. I wonder if there'll be enough. Eye cord takes up a bit more... Definitely agree with you. I think iCord might be the way to go. Um, I'm growing green cotton in my garden and harvesting it as they open. It is a really pretty pale green. Yet yeah, that's the thing, Kathleen. Cotton comes in natural colours. They're very pale and very subtle, but there's, well, except for that brown one, um, but there's, there's soft greens, there's soft yellows. I even believe that there is a softish pink, is that right? I could be wrong about that, but I've definitely seen, um, I've definitely seen a lot of the greens and the yellows. Cindy's asking, how much will that little spindle hold? It'll actually hold quite a lot because what you can do is you can actually bulb out, like out and around. As long as you keep the areas for your fingers clear for for twisting you can bring it right up to about here I would I wouldn't go much higher than there and you can bulb it um, but I won't have anywhere near that much cotton just with this one little bowl which is all I have um, for this particular project so um, Vicky mentioned red yes there's all sorts of colors um, and the white is the most popular for manufacturing, so most cotton farmers grow the white, but there's all sorts of tones and colours all over the world. Um, Kathleen says, no, it looks the same as the white. A friend gave me the five seeds once. Um, are you talking about the, the, the actual flower is a soft green? Alison says, I did a cotton, a spinning cotton class with a lady from America a couple of years ago. She showed you how to use the hand carter, spin cotton in all different things. 
I grow cotton in the garden too. Cotton in the garden, like we hear about cotton as a cotton growing industry being evil, right? And they're water hoarders and all sorts of things. And I'm not going to defend that. But you can absolutely grow a little bit of cotton in your garden for, for your own use with no real hassles. And it just looks like you're growing a little, a little bush, like a little mini bush. Um, will you post updates in the fun zone? Updates on my little cotton seed things that I'm growing? See, I also have the chickens to contend with. And the last time I grew cotton, I got them this big, started getting some leaves. Then the chickens were all like, mmm, they look delicious, and ate them. Um, Kathleen Hansen says, third season now and have heaps of spare seeds. That's awesome. Um, was that Joan Ruan? I, I, I'm sorry if I've trashed that lady's name. Um, no, oh, no, my spinning project. Yes, absolutely, and Instagram and all the places, for sure. You know what I'm like, Pippin. Will they grow in a pot? Yes, they're only they're only quite small. They do need a little bit of nutrients, um, but nothing too, nothing too dramatic. You should. Oops, I think that's me on the glass. Sorry. Could you guys hear that squeaking noise? Hope not. Um, I know the cotton itself is green. The flowers are pink. Yeah. So um, I don't know what any of the different genuses or breeds of the cotton are, but the one I grew had soft, pale green. Um, flowers and then grew white cotton. Um, so and they look they the the flowers themselves are beautiful. Um, yeah, Alison, that was the thing yesterday because you popped in late. Yesterday I was um, walking past my local florist and I noticed that she had bouquets of um, cotton bowls and I'm like, oh my god, I haven't spun a cotton bowl in ages. And she actually had passed me this one. It had broken off a stem. She was like, can you use it? I was like, yeah. Um, I heard it sound like grass, glass being scratched. Yeah. It's because glass was being scratched. So that's exactly what was going on. The tip on this is really quite sharp. Um, and in the glass bottom, which is why we do not use our metal tips in our wooden bowls. Um, it was yeah. I have some in a pot and some in the garden. The pots are taller than the garden. Oh, really? Do you get more off the pots, or is the actual greenery just bigger? Does that make sense? You guys have got any questions? Throw them in. I may not be able to answer them. I don't know everything about like I know hardly anything about spinning cotton, other than that I can do it. I don't know much in the way of theory, but it sounds like we've got some people in the chat here who, who know a lot more about it than I do, um, and they, I, I hope they would be willing to share that information. I think they are. Today, the stream is sponsored by Bloomin' Marvelous at Beanley Marketplace. Look, technically it is. They gave me this. So technically it is sponsored. They gave me a thing. I never said I was going to do it live on YouTube. I just said I'd spin it. Um, if I send a baggie of seeds to Chantel, can you distribute it to your mates? Absolutely, I can distribute it to my mates. Probably not to anybody. What's Tasmania and, and WA's rules about seeds and things like that? They're normally pretty strict. Um, and I definitely would, I'd be, able to, I'd be able to share it with Queenslanders for sure and New South Wales people, definitely. How long will it take me to spin it? I mean, where, I don't know, some time. <laughs> some time. How do you prevent your fingers from getting rough? Well, normally when I'm spinning wool, you get natural lanolin and oils. Getting rough fingers from spinning is not an issue. Um, sweaty fingers, yes. My hands are actually, you can see it here. They're, getting, they're perspiring from the warmth of the cotton. But no, roughness is not normally an issue. Um, oops, hang on a second. I have to fix this. Um, now what happens there? Sorry guys, just let me just tidy this up. So I don't like to waste any. So when I broke off before, I just started spinning from the other end and left it there so that when we got to the end, we could just add twist to it and off we went. But now it has foiled our spinning plans by being a butt face. 
There we go. Get some more twist in there. Draft. I'm just, I try to keep the draft zone under the camera. Normally I would like big arms, out I go sort of thing. But because I'm trying to keep it under the camera, it's a little um, shorter than I would normally go. Okay. And roll the cotton onto the spindle and bring it up and add more twist. As I said, because I'm not used to tarkly spinning, I am parking and drafting rather than long drawing, which you can absolutely do once you get in it. Kerry's off to work. Bye, Kerry. Yeah, I think WA is very strict with their plants and seeds and things. Um, awesome, so am I. Don't have to worry about if they grow here. Yeah. Rebecca's loom arrived. Fantastic. Not sure how it would grow in the southern climate. Well, I mean, you could grow it as a pot in the house. They don't grow very big. I mean, I suppose it depends on the genus. Do yours grow very big, Kathleen? Because, you know, you might be able to do it as a pot on your balcony or something. Just for something a bit different. I remember the flowers actually really did attract the butterflies. I was really surprised by that. Um, if you have the stylus attachment for your Magicraft spinning wheel, cotton spins great on that too, which I do have, absolutely. You just need to make sure you get plenty of twist. Yeah, that's the trick with any short fibre thing and especially cotton um, because unlike wool and short fibre um, animal hairs, there's no scales on cotton, so it's only the twist that holds it together. It does not grab itself the same way wool does. So you need to get that twist in there, otherwise it just flies apart. And you need to have a lot of twists so that when you ply it, it doesn't come apart then. Does that make sense? It's like a juggling act. Uh, is support spindling hard to do? I can long draw but not sure about also supporting a spindle. I personally prefer support spindling over, uh, over drop spindling. It is definitely my preferred spindling. Um, big part of it because I'm lazy and I like to lean on things. Harder to do when you drop spindling. Um, so um, I would say give it a try um, and park and draft so that you're really only doing one thing at a time. It's just like when you're first learning to spin on a wheel, you treadle first by itself with no fibre in your hand to start with so that your feet start doing what they're supposed to do by themselves. Right, so that you don't have to think about it, a bit of muscle memory comes in. Then what happens is you twist a bit, pinch that, then draft. Let the twist travel into what you've spun. Pinch it and draft. And so you don't have to do everything all at once. You can do it one step at a time. And this is the same for normal support spindling or tarkly spindling or anything else like this. Drop spindling is really the only one that it, parking and drafting is that bit trickier on just because of gravity. You've got to deal with gravity too. So it um, can be done, but a bit trickier. Um, Kathleen says she does add plenty of organic matter to her pot or soil, then just regular care. The ones that grow in the pots will grow hip high in the warmer months and about 18 inches in the cooler months. They do produce either way. Absolutely they do. I know that I went past some cotton farms um, out towards Chinchilla and I was shocked to see how short the cotton plants actually were. For some reason I'd always in my brain envisioned cotton plants to be sort of chest high. But these things were more like knee high. Um, can you move your bowl a little up? We can't see your hands well. Okay, thank you. Um, would be willing to try, yeah. Is that better? Let me know if that's a bit better. Um, support spindles, not hard. You just need to practice, practice, and more practice, and then it will click, and off you go. Great for sitting on the couch watching TV. That's one of the things I love about support spindling, is that you can just sit on your butt and do it. You don't need... Um, you don't need to be, sorry, I've just got to add some more twist into here. Um, you don't need to be standing up or leaning over an edge or anything like that. You can just 
quite comfortably. I actually sit very unladylike, cross-legged, bowl between my legs, and bam, off I go. Yes, yes, is that better? Is that what you're saying? So we're still on that first large puny that we made. So it was a um, nearly a full bowl. Not a full bowl, what am I saying? Nearly a full petal. Um, hi, Lynn, Leslie, welcome to the chat. Um, oh, your yarn arrived, that's awesome. Even more lovely in real life, I'm glad. I do try to make the photos as realistic as possible, but it is hard. It's hard. Oh, I can see that my face cam's gone off. I just need to um, wind this on a little bit before I fix it. Okay. Um, Joss says, I'm off to Chinchilla on the weekend. I might see some cotton. You may well do. And what time of the year are we? Yeah. So you may even see it just all over the sides of the road. Because what happens is they fill the trucks, like they, they have the bales of cotton and they fill the trucks with them, but the breeze gets through it and it just tufts everywhere. So you might be able to like nab yourself some if you pull over. You'll be able to get some off of the side of the road for yourself. There we go. Face cam. Yeah, I fixed it. I needed a hand for it though, and this is definitely a... Oops, what's happened here to my... My poonies bunched up. There we go. Unbunch him. Unbunch your poonies. That's it. That's going to be a new thing now, isn't it? Unbunch your poonies. Um, hi, Daigo. She's in the chat. She's waiting for the ad to finish. I appreciate you waiting, Daigo. Um, who's that guy that goes to Bendigo that makes the fancy support spindles with the specialised stands and bowls? Uh, luxury overdose, is that who you're thinking of? I'm not a, I, I personally am more of a, a Lair of the Bearded Dragon kind of girl when it comes to the spindles. I'm not a fan of that stand. Um, I can just imagine it wearing away the wood on my spindle. And, like, that's really all your spindle is, right? <laughs> um, yeah, luxury overdose. Bendigo Cotton, Vivian says, Bendigo or cotton gathering along the side of the road next year, decisions. I mean, can't you do both? Can't you gather cotton off the side of the road on your way to Bendigo? Really? Um, I mean, that's definitely a possibility, right? Um, it'll be a bit dusty. It'll be fine. And you certainly won't be alone. There's a lot of people who do it. Um... Ad done. Welcome, Daigo, and thank you for watching the ad. I really appreciate that. While YouTube videos are free to watch, they're not free to make. And so they're free to upload, but the equipment required is not um, the, the equipment required is not free. <laughs> um, so I appreciate whenever you watch ads or, or you know make purchases from my web store or even the Amazon store with affiliates or um, Support me on Patreon. You guys over there are fantastic. I'm going to start in the next few weeks um, having it in my end screen um, a list of those of you. I'll be double checking with those of you who want your name on the end screen for a start. Um, and putting up a list of those of you thanking you individually for your support on Patreon. So that will be starting in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for an email just so I can grab your permission to do that or not do that. The stand is useful for storage. Don't use the stand for spinning. Yes, I agree with you. Um, although that's they actually sell it as a spindle, mate. They sell it as a stand for spinning, I believe. Uh, from Lilita. Oh, that's a good point. You're in the wrong place, aren't you? Well, you could possibly go via somewhere cottony to... to um, Get the cotton. I don't know where's the nearest cotton farms to Lily. Excuse me, to Lilydale. I have no idea. Um, uh, where is it? Allison says sounds sounds like that. I I usually use Lair of the Beard Dragon. Got some beautiful spindles from him, but I did buy a storage stand from them from the other guy. Yeah, yeah. Because um, they've got they've got their storage stands, but they also have this 
is they call it a spinning buddy. Is that a spinning buddy? I think that's what it's called. When you come for a visit, but, but if you're coming at Bendigo time, I'm probably driving down to, to Bendigo. I'm really looking forward to Bendigo. So those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show is the biggest um, gathering of um, sheep and wool and yarn craft enthusiasts in Australia. Um, they have around 20,000 odd people through the gates over a weekend and it is insanity and it's just crazy fun. Uh, it is in Victoria, which at the moment is a COVID hotspot in Australia and it has been cancelled for this year, funnily enough. Um, so there's no Bendigo this year because it would normally be around the 17th of July, that weekend, whatever that weekend is around the 17th. Um, so there's no Bendigo this year, but what there is, is an online virtual sale called the Big Wool Show. So Fibrofix is going to have a, um, ha I want to call it a stand, it's not a stand. It's a, I'm part of the Big Wool Show and I'll have a virtual store. Um, we're going to be doing lots of fun things over what would be traditionally the Bendigo weekend. Um, I don't know if it's going to continue on in the future. The goal was just so that people could have somewhere to go and have fun over that Bendigo weekend, especially for a lot of us who rely heavily on the sales from that Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. Uh, for me, the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show, a lot of those profits went into upgrading my tech gear. So not having that this year has meant that Plans that I had at the beginning of the year are now no longer going to be happening. Um, is Mulaney still going for a retreat? Um, I honestly don't know. You'd have to check with Queensland Spinners. I have no idea. I can't imagine it would be. Um, but yes, you'd need to just double check. Or at least not this year. Usually it's happening, but maybe not this year. Um, Alison says, do you have any Navajo spindles? They are fun to use. No, I don't have any Navajo spindles. I've got a mine spindle, um, but no Navajo spindles. They do look fun to use. Maddie is happy I'm not going. Yeah, Abby and Tim are also happy I'm not going. Um, so they're, they're not happy. What normally happens here is I turn into this monster is what happens. I turn into a monster. The pre-Bendigo monster, don't talk to me, I'm busy. Leave me alone, I'm busy. I'm doing stuff. I've got to get all the things done. I've got 11 billion things to do and only 10 billion minutes to do them in. So Tim and Abby normally go off on a holiday for the last week of the school holidays. And they go off and do something fun that I can't do. Like, like the last couple of years, they've gone skiing, which they both love. And my husband was always like, oh, no, we should save a ski trip as a family holiday. Those of you that know me know that's never going to happen because of my very bad knees. I, can, I can't I can ski for a start and if I slip in the snow, I'll probably end up in hospital um, because of how bad my knees are. Um, and so I explained to them that I'm not offended that they take this big family trip without me and that they should go and enjoy it and spend as much time skiing as they possibly can. And that, so they do. They have a wonderful week away. They drive down. They stay in sort of budget accommodation to make it more affordable because skiing in Australia is so expensive to do. Um, and they just have a fantastic time. But unfortunately, because there's no Bendigo, uh, there's no ski trip. And because, you know, Victoria's closed, New South Wales... They could go down to New South Wales but may not be able to come home. So we're not travelling outside of our state at the moment. Um, Diamond says, Matt is so happy I'll be home for his birthday. I'm sad because going to Bendigo was so much fun. I felt so guilty when I found out that you are missing Matt's birthday to come to Bendigo and help me out. But at the same time, I was kind of glad you were there because I needed help. Does it, does it, does it, that sounds so selfish. I'm sorry, Matt. Um, links there for the Big Wool Show. Make sure you keep an eye on it. There's more and more stall holders information going up every day. Mine's not up there yet. I haven't finished putting together all my stuff, but I'll be there soon. I'll be getting it all organised over the weekend. Um, so I'm just about done this first poony. Nearly. Not quite. And I don't think I'll be doing them this big because I've munched up the end of it. Look at that. It's all come apart in my... 
this is a discussion we've had before when I'm spindle spinning is how hot my hands get. Like it is, is it's, it's very hot, especially compared to my other hand. Um, and so the fibers stick. And when you're spinning feltable things, <laughs> it's really bad. But even cotton, it's sticking to my hands a bit. Um, Lisa has signed up for the big wool labs. Hoot, hoot. Um, Game Widow says that's why New Zealand ski fields are so busy. All the Aussies go there. They'd be feeling the pressure this year. Do you have, plus you have the heater on because it's freezing. Absolutely. But even if I didn't have the heater on, this hand would still be getting very warm. This cotton is just so lovely. I'm really, so, I honestly thought it would be dodge, like for spinning, because it was at the florist. Like, talk about judgmental much. Um, definitely, if you were buying it from a florist, that is not the way to go. It is very expensive. If you just wanted to have a go, it might be worth it as a treat. Um, maybe even to see if you could buy a single stem rather than an entire bunch. Because it's so dear. Um, and even if you talk to them, explain to them what you want it for, they might even do what my florist did, which was have one that broke off that she couldn't sell. Rebecca says her teacup is attacking her. Um, I, I think you need to do something about that teacup. It, it made me think very, my brain went instantly to um, very much um, Beauty and the Beast level of teacup interference. <laughs> Got to keep an eye on it. I've realised that as I'm getting more comfortable and relaxed with this, my spinning is getting finer. So it's going to change my overall yarn. So, oops, the lumpy bit. Come on, you can do it. Be less lumpy. There we go. Right, one. This little hook on here really bugs me, honestly. I think I'd rather just a, a pointy bit. I mean, it's probably a lot safer having a hook than another pointy bit if you fell on it or something. Um, yeah, ask them to put any that break aside for you. I mean, you know, and if you're willing to chip in a few bucks, at least it's not rubbish for them, if that makes sense. Definitely worth asking the question. All they can say is no. And that's not that harder, you know, be like, oh, well, thanks. But look at that. See how it catches and fills up there? I do not like it. Get off. I'm obviously holding it on the wrong angle or it wouldn't be able to do that. But let me just have a little go. I might, I might have my hand too low again because of the camera. Hang on. Yeah. It doesn't catch on if my hand's that bit higher. So hold your hand higher, Chantel. Can you guys hear my chicken? Oh, it's a kit teacup kitten. <laughs> Sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> I was visualizing something totally different. Um, I think you can still get cotton seeds from the cotton board's educational area to grow the odd plant. Um, they keep the seeds for replanting. Ah, then keep the seeds for replanting. Absolutely. That's because that's where I got my initial set. There was a cotton board came to Queensland Spinners and had a big old talk. They gave us all a bit of dirty ginned cotton. Yay, thanks for that, mate. Um, and um, he had a big thing of seeds. And someone said, can we have some seeds? And he was just like, oh, you want seeds? And it was just like, yeah. And, and next thing you know, he's just giving everyone like a handful of seeds. Um, heaps of cotton plants at the Rockley Flower Markets. That's the catch, though. We were just talking about how, like, someone was saying that where they are, a bunch of them is $50. Um, Kathleen says, I made my own spindle with a fine double-ended needle and a bead. They spin so fast and they don't have the hook. Oh. Um, no, you don't, Kim. You, oh, I just broke. You don't have to sing Cotton Eye Joe while spinning cotton. We certainly can't sing it here on YouTube or we'll definitely get a copyright strike. And do you guys want my channel shut down? Because if you do, you're not my friends. Just saying. 
Just making it really clear. <laughs> if you want my channel shut down, due to copyright strikes, not my friends. Um, teacup is half of her sibling's size. Oh, so her name is Teacup. She's not a teacup kitten. Is that what you're saying? I'm confused now. But she's a kitten, not an actual cup. Um, you want to now, don't you? Yes, I do, Spanner Chick. I definitely want to sing Cotton Eye Joe while I'm spindling cotton. But unfortunately, due to YouTube's very stringent copyright system, even if I hummed a few bars, I would get hammered. Um, you're a troublemaker. Um, Kathleen says seeds have a better strike rate if they are fresh. I'll send some seeds from this year. That would be amazing. Um, I have no idea how actually fresh this cotton is. So, I mean, I'm picking it off the bowl, but who knows how long it's been sitting there. I don't know what old cotton on cotton stems looks like. I'm, I'm not educated in this. Can what be done? Can what be done, Freaky? I'm concerned what you're asking. What if you sing it to the tune of Spider-Man? No, it'll still get struck. Uh, when you get cotton seeds, how do you treat them before planting? Look, I literally gave them a bit of a soak in water and poked them in the ground. Um, but I bet Kathleen will be able to tell us what she recommends because Kathleen is our cotton expert thank you ah oh, singing cotton eye joe to spider-man look i probably could you know in all reality um we worked out last night that i could do brady bunch to spider-man badly but it is doable i can hear the australia post motorbike snow is losing her mind we are nearly at the end of our first poonie It's a bit haphazard, hit and miss. There's that much left. See that little tufty bit? And then we'll join on one of our other poonies. What I might do is pause and make another poony so that those of you who just joined in um, can see how I got the preparation that I'm using. So I'll just wind that there. Let it have a little rest in the bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna do a big one again because that was that was um, dramatic to say the least. So I like to pick off all the bits. I like the cotton ginning places where they just break it up and mix it through. Not my favourite because I'm control freak. So I pick off all the little leafy bits, or at least as many as I can. Alrighty, there's a little tufty bit there that was near the base. I don't like that because it's wrong. So I break that off too. I'm overly pedantic, I'm aware. Okay. Now I am going to divide this one up a little bit because it's it's going to be another big one and I don't want another big one. A little hard bit, get off. Okay. So what I do is I just tease away. There's a seed in here. I can feel it. It's hard. It's big. They're this big. All right. Oh, get off there, you. They're, they're, the seeds are quite large. Okay. And I just tease it away from, and it sort of has to, you can feel it sort of disengage like it snaps off because the seeds are fluffy. Kathleen, are your seeds fluffy or smooth? Just out of curiosity, because you, there's both, both exist. Um, Kathleen says that's how she does her seeds anyway, so just soak them in a bit of water. I just soak them overnight, just because I'm slack and forget about them, and then I just plant them in the dirt. Um, I'm impressed with how much you can get off one. Yes, absolutely, that's the thing. It's very, um, very, goes a long way, goes a long way. I'll actually measure this yarn once I'm done. Now, the reality is how long is a piece of a string? 
because if someone could, you know, if you spun it finer or you spun it thicker, it would change the overall length, obviously. But it will give you a rough idea of how much cotton comes off one bowl um, and give you an idea of, you know, what you would need to get your hands on to do an entire project. My project is tiny. So my project is just to use this one thing and score all these seeds. Sweet as fluffy seeds, yep. Do we get the smooth seeds here in Australia? I've, I know they exist. I just haven't, I've never experienced them firsthand. Alison says her seeds are fluffy as well. Um, oh, check my comment out uh, to strike. Lay them in a wet hand towel and seal in baggy for a few days. They'll start to shoot so you can plant the good ones and discard the others. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. I missed your comment from above. I don't get sealed. I, I look down and I look up. Watch out, here comes the Brady Bunch. Yep. I can feel more seeds. So what I'll do is I'll, I will sp probably split this one in half just because it was just too much in my warm hands. Now, if you don't have hot hands, don't split it. Keep it all together. It's easier having one thing. But because I'm Little Miss Hot Fingers, um, it's easier for me not to hold too much fiber. When I'm spindling, I always break it down into small pieces for the same reason. Otherwise, I end up belting everything. Um, sweaty, sweaty, and hot equals felt. Cotton doesn't felt, luckily, but it still makes my hands very uncomfortable. But yeah, it, it like that one bowl toughs out into quite a lot of cotton. Like one little petal of a bowl, even. Oh, there's another seed in there. Come out. Evil seed. Well, you're not evil. You're going to become a cute plant. Funnily enough, I've just cleared a garden that could probably take some of these. Um, I think maybe Australia uses the fluffy ones. Maybe. What's the growing time for the plant? They're pretty quick, actually. So, um, if I remember correctly, they you plant in spring and they the the flowers flower and then they turn into they dry and turn into these and puff open. And that's normally sort of four to six months. Does that sound about right? I think it really depends on your individual plant and your location. But around four to six months from planting to, to fluffy bits. That's my technical term, fluffy bits. Um, okay, so that's a lot in that one. So I am going to split that. I'm going to split it again, ha, 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 because I don't like them big. I'll just pop that over there out of the way. And I just spread it out a little, just so it's a little bit even. So you can see here it's a bit thick in this middle bit. I'll tough that out a bit. Just makes it easier when you're spinning it. If it's all a bit even, it drafts easier off your little poonie. If you've got little full bits, that's where I was getting the lumps, where I hadn't spread that one out enough. If you're patient, you can do it while you're spinning, but I'm not patient. It's like, do it right. Comes down, it's like anything with spinning comes down to your preparation. You can totally grab a handful of something and spin it, but you will get yarn that possibly looks like you grabbed a handful of something and spun it. Whereas if you just take a little bit of extra time in your preparation, You'll get a smoother yarn. If that's your goal, you might want a nice rustic looking sort of thing. Depends on what your end goal is. I just use a little knitting needle. You don't have to. You can use cotton carders if you want. You can use whatever you can get your hands on. I have a knitting needle, so that's what I'm using. Um, you're going to have to perfect your cotton dyeing. I know. I was thinking about that last night. I thought the second I talk about doing this, people are going to be on my case about getting the cotton dyeing going. I pulled all the stuff out for it last night. I've got everything I need to dye cotton. I just haven't done it. And I've never done it. So it's 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 scary because it's new and I'm scared. Um, um Kathleen says, harvesting about now on the farms, but if you have a sheltered garden or an above-ground garden, they'll grow year-round. Ah, awesome. So you, so you don't, it's not, an, it's not an annual, it's a perennial. Is that right? I got that right just then. Didn't I? 
yeah. Um, I'd say only the warm months in Canada. Yeah, Canada is specific, like super cold. They get legit winter. We don't get legit winter. Or at least in Queensland, we definitely don't get legit winter. Like it's cold for us at 10 degrees or 12 degrees. And I think under 20 and we're all like, hmm, it's getting a bit cool. And we don't get snow much here in Queensland. We are subtropical. We have some areas that get a little bit of snow down towards the border. Um, but for the most part, we don't get snow in Queensland. Weep. Weep. There we go. Um, they should grow indoors. Would they grow indoors? Yes, they would grow indoors, but... You would have to keep an eye on them. They would need sun. They need sun. So they need a sunny window. They need water. They like water. Water's their friend, which is, you know, why they're so demonised, especially here in Australia where water's an issue. Um, they love water. They like <coughs> drink all the water. Um, but, yeah, just, just keep an eye on them. They're like any plant, really. Like if you notice they're starting to wilt, give them a drink. You know, they grow like a little mini hibiscus. Like, do you guys know what hibiscus are? Um, I think the winter was on Tuesday last year. <laughs> I think winter was on a Tuesday. It was, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I go down to Bendigo, and like, I have a whole separate wardrobe to go to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show because I don't need to wear any of those clothes up here. Like, yeah. I just don't. So I, I keep like a crate of my Bendigo clothes. That one probably could have been spread out a bit more. We've still got half our cotton left on our bowl here. <laughs> so this is one of the little little ones I did yesterday. I'm just going to have a drink while I check in the chat. Have you guys got any questions as, as specifically for Alison or Kathleen? Because they know way more about this than I do. Um, Alison says, try spinning straight off the seed. Try getting the clump with the seed in, then loosen the clump a bit and then attach a single to the fibre on the seed and then draft while holding the seed. Game Widow says, your Bendigo wardrobe that I mock you for. Yes, that Bendigo wardrobe. <laughs> um... I don't know, I feel like I'd have less control off the seed, Alison, and, and I'm a bit of a control freak. Um, I definitely will give it a try. I've, I'll have a play with it later. Not on camera. <laughs> Maybe I should do it on camera. Oh, there's a hello bit of, bit of cotton. Get down there. I don't want to breathe that in. Um, all right. Should, do you guys reckon I should try and spin a little bit off the seed and let, let Alison and that tell me how to do it properly so that I don't stuff it up? Um, you guys can all let me know while I spin this, this here poonie. This here poonie. No singing, Chantel, because you'll get copyright struck. I've been wearing my bendy clothes. Spanish chick, really? Sorry guys, this one's drafting really nicely, so I'm like totes going long draw here. Uh, see if I can wiggle it around a little. There we go. So you can see the thread. Tuesday night at Scouts. Oh yeah, I can imagine you would have needed it. Whoops. Got a thin bit. I'm worried it's going to snap. I'm going to wind it on. Just give it a bit more twist. And wind it on. Get down the bottom. There we go.
Let me check in the chat. Kathleen says to go for it. Rebecca said, oh, I did snap it. Look at that. I wasn't looking and it went snappy-do. Hang on a sec. I'll rejoin. At the other end where it's still tufty. No, dear. I untwisted. Did you see what I just did then? I joined it. Then went, oh, there's a lump and untwisted the join. Totes clever, don't recommend. It's a bit blurry on this camera. I might see, because I, I actually, um, just let me see if I can fix up and get it to focus on my hands rather than on the, um, so we'll get it to focus on the fluff rather than the table. I think that's the best we've got. All right. And I know the face cam's gone, so just give me a second while I click apply and okay. I don't know if that'll be much better. And face cam. Um, my Bendigo clothes are my normal winter clothes. You two were sooks down south. Yes, we were. Um, Alison says, it's a hard to describe in words, but one you, once you get the hang of it. I think that's like a lot of things with spinning, isn't it? It's like really tricky to describe it, but it's like you just know when you've done it right because it just works, right? Hang on. All right, I am. After I finish this little poony, which is much smaller than the other one, so we'll get through it heaps faster. Um, I got all that effort to make it less less blurry, and then I go and take my hands out from under it. Oh, we're getting a we're getting a snaggy tangle thing going on. Hang on, on that dumb hook. Not my favourite. Get some twist in there. Wind that on. I'm just, what it is, is the hook's not dumb. I've got my hand on the wrong angle. That's all it's boiling down to. I've just got to get my hand up a bit higher and it doesn't do it. Now, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing here, but I only gently have grip on there and I'm just slowly pulling it. And the twist is twisting up the next bit and pulling it out, if that makes sense. Um, you say that dye wench, but you complain just as much about the cold as I do. Yeah, but I like the cold more than the heat. Um, the Ross River fever not only has stopped me crocheting, I just fell asleep. Oh, no. Well, while you're asleep, we did a massive giveaway and you totes missed out. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't do anything. We've just been spindling. I've just started spinning some cotton and I have to say this is going better than my first try. Oh, that's awesome. It's all me, it's not you. Well, I'm kind of glad I'm not boring you to sleep. Like, thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> How is cotton mercerized? Oh, that's a chemical treatment that they do to make it shiny and hard. Um, so it's spun softly and treated. Well, no, it's treated and then spun softly. But it's a chemical treatment for mercerized cotton. Um, Bob Curran finally made it and sit in one place and have coffee. Like that's like the trifecta. You made it, you've got one spot to sit and you have a coffee. All right, guys, we're at the end of that poonie. We're going to try and do, okay, we're going to try and do what? <sighs> okay, we're going to try and spin straight off a cotton bowl next. This is, I still want to pick all the stuff off it. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. I can't leave that and risk it going in. Little ugly bit, get off. Okay. See how short these little bits are? Like little hard little knobby bits. I get rid of those too. 
All righty. So, okay. I am in your hands, Alison. Alison is teaching me how to spin directly off a seed. So uh, there's a few seeds in here. So do I just pull like a, a section out or do I leave it as it is? Um, Sally Poonies does sound wrong and uh, Google tries to spell check you to some other words, just so you know. Be careful when you Google it. Um, the feel free, feel sorry for me, giveaway. Okay, I'm having a sip of my tea. Uh, coffee, I'm drinking coffee. Well, I mean, I use that term loosely now. All right, what I'm going to do, because I don't know if Alison's about, I'm just going to pull out one seed. It says a seed there. I'll hold those other seeds out of the way and I'll give it a yoink. All right, I'm going to tuft it out a little just so I can get the bulk off the seed. I'm not pulling it so much. All right, and then do I just draft it like the seeds there so if I just hold it on the seed is that what you're saying to do I'm learning here I love this Chantel learns live on YouTube um, uh, then you tuft it out around the seed yes so like what I've done here or do I need to tuft it some more look at us using tufting like we use it all the time like it's an everyday word it's just Zhuzh that out, tuft it out. So I'm not pulling it off the seed, I'm just sort of straightening it around it. Is that right? And then hold the seed. Join it. Something made a noise over there. What was that? Oh, no, it wouldn't draft. Hang on. Join it. I'm really struggling. Um, get some things in here. This is different. I can feel it tugging off the seed. Hang on. Get some more twist in here, but it's done the big old thing around that hook. I was too busy worrying about a new skill to be worrying about angles. Okay, so I highly recommend not a tarkly with a hook. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. Move my hands. Jackie's thrown in a link about mercerizing cotton. Um, I probably could pull faster, but I'm nervous that I'm just going to like stop it from doing its thing here. Oh, hang on. I've just got to get the angle going. The camera's too low for me to get this correct angle. So I'm just trying to, I'm just going to push it up a bit more. You guys are going to see the, the inner workings. <laughs> My coffee cup, microphone cables. I just need a bit more height because I'm just worried. Like, I'll bring it back down after because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, takes practice, but you'll get it. The hook is so you can drop spindle the cotton. You can just work your way around the seed. Yeah, that's sort of what it's like. It's that's like it's nearly what it's doing naturally. Like I'm not actually guiding it. The sort of where all the fiber is is guiding it if that makes sense oops did i just go the wrong way then yep okay i'll work that out yeah i don't think i would drop spindle off off a um for, for cotton i mean maybe when i build up some confidence but no i definitely don't want to do that. 
So I can feel so that we've got used about half of what was there now. Yeah, it comes off easy once you get at it. Yeah. It's like it just wants to come off. It's really bizarre. I've always rolled it into poonies. I've never worked off a seed. It feels really it feels really weird in your fingers. Hang on, I've just got to um, put this down the bottom. I definitely want to get my hands on another style of um, spindle, and I've got a mar I've got a, a stylus for my Marge Craft wheel. So once I start growing a bit more cotton, I definitely think I would like to try doing it that way. You don't need to do the poonies. Yeah, I don't need to do the poonies. I've always done poonies and this is, I definitely feel like I have more control with the poonies, just saying. Hi Enigmata. Um, but this is cool too. Wow. Um, I don't think it's even changing the quality of my spin that much. I mean, it's a little, but not, not enough for me to be disappointed. Um, I, a bit of practice and I'll get used to the drafting of it. This is mesmerizing. God, I'm nearly at the end of the seat here, you guys. It feels so weird. Look at this, hang on. I'm just got to get some twist in and wind it on because I actually think you get more of the fluff off. Here we go. And there's our seed. That was so cool. It feels so meditative when you get the hang of it. Yeah, I really like that. So for those of you that just joined in, Alison here spins direct her cotton directly off the little tufty bit and, sp and around the seed, and I've never done that before. I've always done this where I sort of pre-prepare it. Um, but that was really fun. I like that. I'm going to use up the rest of my poonies, but that was cool. I would definitely, like, I'm like, dudes, we don't need to do poonies. But then we don't get to say poonies. Um, poonies is a fun word, and I think everyone should have it in their dictionary. So, you know, we can, we can be like, well, you could make poonies, or you can spin directly off the seed. That's so cool. Thanks for showing me that, Alison. Seems like very little waste. Yeah, yeah, definitely very little waste. Um, I'm just going to have a look and see if I can tell now that all my seeds are in the cup. I don't think I can tell which ones I was picking off versus the one that I spun off. Uh, actually, I can. I can. I can tell that this is the one I spun off just because he's got a little, he's got his little spinning end tail that's got a little bit of twist on it. That's it. It's the only real difference. That's so cool. Very little waste. Um, I, and I'm particularly picky and so I'll, I'll just wind this off and I'll show you what I've been picking up. I've got a little pile. It's just hidden above my mouse there. Um, so I'll just bring it in to shot. So I've got this little pile of crap. So it's all the little bits of leaves. It's the tufty bits that are on the ends that I don't like. They're little hard and short bits. They feel like I don't know how to describe what they feel like. They're hard. They're little hard bits. So I get rid of those. But that's my little pile of crap. Waste. Let's go with waste. Um, that was fun, Alison. I've got jobs I'm supposed to do this afternoon, but guess what I want to do instead? Grr. <laughs> um, as this is cotton, is it the same process for wool? Um, you can definitely spindle spin wool for sure. Um, it's slightly different. You need to prepare it slightly differently. Um, 
but you can still spin it the same. I think some call this bit the vegetable matter. Yeah, yeah, that is definitely VM for sure. Uh, VM is generally more so when doing sheep's fleece though. Um, and it's like bits of grass seed and stuff like that that ca caught up in the fleece. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's addictive, definitely addictive. Like, yeah. And considering like how much enjoyment we've gotten here from a cotton ball I was given by a florist, honestly. Um, I'm going to try to grow some colored cotton this year. I was given some brown, green and cream seeds a few years ago. You should definitely give it a go, bub, for sure. They grow really cute little plants. I actually like the plants as well. So even before, like, it's, it's kind of like, how do I put this? We have water issues here, like, as you would, bub. Like, ours are nowhere near as bad as yours. But I always feel guilty watering the garden. Um, so if I know something's going to be productive, like I water my fruit trees, but I don't water the grevilleas, if that makes sense. Um, and so, oops, sorry, I pulled that bowl forward again, didn't I? Um, and so knowing that these are productive, I would give them a drink. Maybe, probably not as much as they want, but I'd definitely give them a drink versus no drinks for them. Um, where are we? Spinning cotton is also good for summer and if you have allergies to wool. Absolutely. I love knitting and crocheting with cotton. Rebecca's going to try and grow some in Minnesota. Wouldn't this be cool? We get to all, I'd love to see photos um, of how everyone's plants are doing around the world. And like in the different climates and things like that and see if we can all grow cotton, even, even if we've got like a snowy climate and things like that. Because I know that they grow it all over the world. It grows like, I think, did someone say it before? It grows in the Andes. Um, don't worry, Kim. I, I've seen the time you sneak, not not mentioning the time. Um, I'm just I'm in the middle of a puny, so I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop spinning these punies. <laughs> that needs to be a song. <laughs> There's still that much left. So if you guys are happy to stick it out, I'm happy to stick it out. Um, so if you've got any more questions, obviously not for me because I don't know much. Um, what are you using to spin and how much do you need to make a garment? Oh, that's a tough one. Okay, I'm currently spinning on a little tarkly that I picked up. We've since worked out during today's live stream, it's not my favourite. It's got a hook on it which keeps getting in my way because I don't like to hold my heavy fat arm up. I like to have it here. But when I do that, it does get caught. Um, so, uh, and to make a garment, it's going to depend on everything like if you're spinning with wool, what kind of garment, what kind of thing. Spinner Chick says you should keep going until you finished all the punies and all the ball. No. <laughs> oh, I haven't even gone through half a ball. So um, the lady that taught Alison said that, that you can, can now spin cotton in the summer and wool in the winter. I love spinning cotton. There are different types of cotton. Yes, there are. There's so many different types of cotton. You guys need to have a good old squiz about it and learn about which will be the good cotton to grow in your region because there's all different types. Like at the start when we showed you how there was the thicker brown cotton and the slinkiest stuff and the fluffiest stuff. Um, they've all got proper names. Um, I'll see if I can grab some resources and drop them into the Fibrific Fun Zone. So those of you that don't know what the Fibrific Fun Zone is, that's our little Facebook community for those of us that watch the lives and hang out on the lives so that we can all keep chatting about the things that we're learning and doing and things like that. So um, I have no idea what cotton this is. This is just the cotton that I got from the florist who had it as a bunch and this broke off one of the bunches and so she gave it to me. Is it like spinning linen? No, it's not linen. Very hard on your hands to spin. Um, it's also quite long fib and fibrous. This feels a lot more like 
like spinning yak to me. It feels more like spinning, like it's got that softness and toughness of, um, um, you know, it's just got this softness like, like animal fibre does, um, whereas linen is not. It does not have that. Um, she also recommended doing a three-ply for knitting and a two-ply for weaving. Did she give any particular reason for that? Good night, Pippin. I'm glad you could stay up and hang out with us. I mean, I, I didn't know much about this. I just got cotton I wanted to play with. <laughs> I learnt lots today too from amazing cotton lovers in our, in our community. Um, I was just going to spin the cotton and chat. <laughs> Which is what it did, really. Man, I'm not looking at this because that's like, to me, I'm like, oh, my God, that's so messy. <laughs> um, it's just intriguing how you can go from a ball of fluff to a ball of yarn and then a garment. COVID-19 has taught you a lot. Yeah, like even like straight off a plant, the ball, the tufty tuff of a plant into spinning and then I'm going to be making this I think I am going to go with the i-cord option um I'll, I'll make it thin i-cord and then make this just into a, like a little bowl decoration um but th I mean that's the thing with spinning and and our, our yarn crafts and not everybody wants to go down the, the rabbit hole of making your own yarn, and I get that. It's it's like a whole other level of addiction. Um, but it is definitely a fun thing to do, and you learn a lot about your yarn constructions. If you learn how to spin, you understand why different yarns act differently as a finished garment. When you construct the actual yarn, you know what that fibre, how it was prepared, and so you kind of understand a bit more about yarn construction rather than just garment construction guys bad news just finish that poony all right so we've still got four little poonies this is the guy that i spun off the seed i, I ripped a seed out of in there and spun that directly off the seed and there's still one left so that one's nearly full so that was sort of like poked in there so we're not even halfway through and we've got a goodly amount on our little spindle here I couldn't tell you how many meters it is. When, when I ply it up, I'll measure it. But I've got to spin all this first. Um, maybe more for structure than I haven't tried it yet. She also covered dyeing the cotton too. I'll try and find her name. She features in the spin-off magazines at times when they talk about cotton. I'll definitely have to have a have a look. I'll be very interested. Um, guys, I'm gonna I'm going to um, continue on with my day. I've got some orders to pack and some bits and bobs to get done here. Um, I've had a lot of fun spinning this cotton. Let me know in the chat if you enjoyed it as well. If you're watching the replay, just don't forget to pop questions in. Um, if I don't know the answer, I'll do, I'm going to be doing a bit of research. So um, I probably should have done more research before this, but I only got this yesterday and was like, oh, my God, cotton, I have to spin it. Um, Bub says that she learned to spin 35 years ago because she was getting dermatitis on her hands. Was that from like knitting and crocheting um, commercial yarns, Bob? And I really hope my yarn doesn't give you dermatitis. Oh, mesmerizing. Can't wait to see the finished product. Have a beautiful day. Hope to catch you earlier next time. Enigmata, what you can do is if you want to go back and scrub back, you can watch from the start as well. Um, so that would be, if you want to do that, that would be really good for me. <laughs> YouTube really like it when you do that. Um, but I won't be live then. So, um, yeah, so that's it for today. I'm going to go and do some things. Um, yeah, so I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. If you've got any suggestions for things that you'd like to see in a, in, in a future live stream, make sure you drop them in the comments or send me a DM or just let me know if there's something in particular. If you've got a question or like a pain point, that you're like, why does this, why is this so? You know, like see how it goes. So I will catch you all next week. Be good. Hang on a second. I've got a fun thing. There we go. End screen. <laughs> Bye.